hello guys in this, video, in this video i'm going to show you how to export data from flutterflow to csv and to pdf now irrespective of where your data source is coming from either from superbase or coming from an api or coming from firebase either of this this approach is going to attend to all of them now i'm just going to show you a sample of what i've implemented so far and uh, we're going to walk back and sh and i'll show you how i implemented it now this is a table and i'm getting my data from superbase we have a stock inventory of about 3 about 294 items they are all displaying on this table here now let me first of all export to csv now i can select this one two three then I click on the export to CSV and we can see it has downloaded automatically. We can see the three items that I selected. I selected wireless Bluetooth. Let me just shift this to the corner a bit. So I selected wireless Bluetooth stainless, stainless water bottle stainless steel water bottle and organic uh, cotton t-shirt so these three items were exported successfully now let me also try the approach of selecting the first 100 items on this page so i'll just go ahead and just uh, click on this okay i've selected them automatically let me click on export and uh, let me open so as you can see we're also having the first 100 items from the CSV and they are all ordered in accordance to what is selected here so let me do the same thing for PDF so I'll just uh, I've already selected, selected all these items I'll just click on PDF here and uh, it downloads let me open PDF and we can see that it automatically shared all the items into different pages now i implemented it in such a way that it will be 12 items or 12 rows per page and here we can see that we have about how many pages here we have nine okay and we have nine pages and it and it also automatically uh, named the page numbered the pages with generated time and all that so we can see the whole design here then let's at this point now see how i implemented it so first of all i want to assume that you've already connected your super base project or if it's firebase or api you've connected it to your to flutter flow now i have two custom actions here one of them for pdf and one for csv i'm going to run through them one by one we'll go for that of the csv first so for the csv after naming the custom action to be export to csv i created it i, I created an argument called selected items and it's of a data type product so let me show you the data type here i created a data type called it product and I created these fields. These fields are to mirror what is on my Superbase headers here. But I just ex exempted this created at. So ID, product name, costs are uh, exactly what we have here on this uh, field. So these are going to be our headers. Let's go back to the custom action. So following this approach actually makes it easy for you because as it is, the data is going to pour in or be, be saved in a paste state be saved in a paste state afterwards before it's uh, exported to either csv or to pdf so i created a list of these arguments and i call these selected items of data type products and i set it to its list i removed this uh, nullable it shouldn't be nullable so there must be an item selected then the next thing i want to point out to is your 
dependencies so i don't want you to just bother i will uh, put a link to here you get this custom action including the, the dependencies and even a step a written step by step uh, way to implement it on your own project so these are the dependencies the one we're working with here for this csv we're working with this share plus this part provider this part provider is going to help us to get a url link uh, for downloading the csv file then we're also working with this universal html and also this csv then these other imports these libraries are imported uh, not with the uh, the classic uh, flutter flow uh, libraries here so we have this package share plus imported this part also imported and uh, all this so you just know how you implement it in your own uh, project and then the next thing i also want you to look at are uh, the nomenclatures like this selected item as you see it's tallies with the name of our argument here selected items so you can change this to suit the whatever name you're going to choose in your project whenever you're creating your custom action then you see this product structure is going to be in line with the name it's going to be in line with the name of the data type product so when a, a, a usually for flutter flow whenever you name a, da a data type this way and you, have, and you have to use it in your project project especially in custom actions or custom functions it's going to uh, be appended to this struct so product struct so it's like a norm so you, whenever you name your uh, product this in here so you just make sure you just add struct uh, to it as well then just go through the custom action go through the code and anywhere that um, you know there's a name that rhymes with whatever my argument whatever the argument is just change it to yours so that you won't have any error when you are saving as you can see the headers here id product name cost price selling price and they are all mirroring this uh, field here So you just go through, go through, and um, you just ensure that you put in the right words for your argument and uh, the right words also for the name of your action. So let's go back to our page. So I created a table here, like you've already seen during the demo. Now this button here. Let me first of all start with this page. The first thing I did was to. Was to query, was to query the the list of rows from Superbase, and I saved the list in a paste state called stock. After saving it in a paste state on page load, I created other fields in this. Okay, this this is stock. I created it to be a Superbase row. So if you are doing Firebase, this one is going to be Firebase row. If it's API, you know it's going to be your API. So it's going, it's going to be your API. Then you can ignore this. That's not necessary. Then I created an index. This is of type integer. Then I made it to be non-nullable. I just initiated it to be zero then the next thing is to create selected stock inventory so this particular uh, page state is going to help me save the selected rules for exporting and I set it to of data type product then the next thing I did this button is for export to CSV so I first of all reset the index this one is not necessary I resetted the in index and also the selected stock inventory then the next thing I did was to 
run a loop action a while loop action now the condition the condition for this loop is going to be whenever index which is at zero is less than number of items that are selected now let me show you how i got that number of items that are selected so um, typically in flutterflow data table widget whenever you select a row when, let me just quickly show you something so this is a data table it's a widget in flutterflow so if you check this selectable if you check it selectable this particular column columns they will appear so whenever you select any row here by, by checking these boxes it's saved in a widget state as we know that every widget on flutter flow or flutter they actually have their own state like a container that they can use in holding uh, a, a value a variable so it's, it's saved in that widget state anything that is selected here now let's go back and i'll show you how we are using that so like i said we are comparing the index with the number of items that are in that widget state the, meaning the number of items that were selected is going to be index less down number of items let me just uh, reselect it come to widget state you are going to choose data table selected rows you are not choosing data table sort column index no it's data table selected rows so i click on this then i click on confirm and also click on confirm then the next thing i'll do is to go and update my pay state why because we want to export the selected stock inventory row we've been able to get the uh, rows or should i say the index of the rows in that selected item so let me just go back again to this our data table so in flutter flow in as much as a row is selected here it's not the whole field in the row that is actually saved in that widget state what is uh, what is saved is the index of that row in the widget state so if this will be zero this will be one this will be two this will be three and that index will be saved so we want to now use that particular index to now fetch that row and save it in the selected stock inventory data type which is a paste it so that we'll be able to use the items we save there to export to csv or to export to pdf so as we know the normal behavior for data type it first of all enlists all the fields so that we try and uh, get all the data to bind to to be saved to the field so we're going to start with id so I'll click on id remember we're getting our data from stock i remember stock got its data from the query we got from superbase now we have like 100 rows from the query we got from superbase and we're getting we're trying to now locate a particular row using that our selected uh, this thing we're trying to locate a particular row for us to be able to fetch that particular row using the index from the selected item where we, we just state to save it now in this in, the, in this stock inventory so it's going to be okay it's going to be an item at index and the specific index is going to be from selected rows but remember that the selected row is also a list and we want the first item in that list and you know the first item is an index is an index that we're able to retrieve the first the, the first index is going to be zero so we are now going to go and check okay which item is the first and it's going to be aligning to this index that we created the pages the page state because it's all it's going to be helping us save which index have we saved 
we'll move to the next index which one have we saved and all that so um save this okay i get the index and i confirm then the next thing is okay i've been able to get the index it is in that state so what i actually want is the id let me run through let me just go over it again i've been able to get the first item that was selected index which is zero i've been able to get the index now of it on the stock list that was saved from the query so what do i need now from that row i need the id so that was why i picked the id then the next thing I, i'm going to do is to run the same process for product name to run the same process for cost price and to run the same for sell price and also to run the same for quantity so that's how i just fill so, uh, all the columns with their respective data in that row then the next thing is that i save it so now i have all my uh, selected stock inventory and their respective rows saved in this space state for the first item then i'll go to the next item by increasing the index from zero okay let's check the next index index one it gets the whole data and the whole loop will run until index is now equal to the number of items and um, if there are five items index is now five the loop will stop so it means that that piece the selected items now is now filled to the number of items that was actually selected then the next action that will run is our custom action our custom action is expecting the list of the selected stock inventory because that is what it needs to export so we just feed it into the argument then after that we go and reset the index so the essence of setting the index is that there's a possibility that maybe in that instance you can just clear all the items that you checked then maybe you can check another item another list again on that uh, same table you don't want it to go and start start from a wrong uh, index so we just reset it we just reset it reset the value then let's close it after that it's downloads and um, it's the same thing that we do for our pdf so the same loop and all that but in this aspect now we're not going to change the pdf to this custom action as well to pdf we're going to change to this one they will also feed it with the selected stock inventory let me just show you the custom action for pdf i will, I will share both uh, custom action at the bottom i still did the same thing with defining the arguments with selected uh, items and then um, with the dependencies and also the necessary imports too so then ensure that you change the names for your arguments and uh, the name of the action to suit uh, what is in your project so that you won't have any error when you are compiling so that's that then i also you might be imagining okay what if paraventure you want to filter this table maybe you want to filter by the or you want to reorder you want to filter by cost price or you want to filter by selling price or maybe you want to just filter by the quantity the product that has that all have five quantity so the good thing about this custom action is just for you to run your filter the when you run your filter you can just go ahead and select all the returned rows that fit that fits your filter your filter description then you follow the process of exporting now if you're finding um, i can